Uh, first, you have financial collapse, which is basically uh, the volume of debt that has to be taken on in order for the economy to continue functioning, cannot continue. And we're seeing that uh, right now in Greece. We're probably going to see that in Japan. We're definitely at a point now in the United States where even if you raise the income tax to 100%, there's absolutely no way of covering the liabilities of the U.S. federal government. So we're at that point now, but the workout of the financial collapse is not all quite there. We don't quite have a worthless currency, but that's in the works. And then that, of course, is followed by commercial collapse, especially in a country like the United States that imports two-thirds of its oil. A lot of that is on credit. And if a little bit of that oil goes missing, then the economy is, starts to fall apart because nothing moves unless you burn oil in the United States. And, of course, a lot of uh, goods that are sold everywhere are imported, again, on credit. And then commercial collapse is generally followed by political collapse because the Congress no longer has the ability to spend money in the fashion to which they have become accustomed. And um, uh, governments at every level start failing. Now, we're seeing the beginnings of that, where fire and police departments around the country are being cut. Right now, there's a big fight over the retirement of uh, retired municipal workers. Retirements are basically being looted in order to paper over these giant gaping holes in the, in the finance uh, scheme. And then the last two stages are, I think, generally avoidable in most places, which is social and cultural collapse. But unfortunately, to, to my thinking, uh, these two stages have largely run their course in many places in the United States where people really don't know their neighbors and also they don't really do very much for themselves. They, they expect to be fed at fast food establishments. They know how to cook from scratch and things like that. So those are the five stages, and uh, uh, a lot of people have found this uh, sort of uh, way of thinking useful in terms of uh, understanding what's happening. And Dmitry Orlov, what do you see the United States looking like for Americans in the next 5 to 10 to 20 years? I think the country will be unrecognizable in 10 years. I don't know about 5, but I don't think it will look like a country in 10 years. I think it will be largely dismembered by its creditors. Do you think... Uh, that we're going to be going quickly or slowly into these uh, these different stages of collapse? Well, I think certain stages, like the onset um, of um, fuel, transportation fuel shortages, will be very sudden. And American society tends to be very fragile. People uh, tend to bring shotguns and baseball bats to uh, to gas stations, and then everything goes downhill from there. So I expect certain parts of the country to go through this cataclysm where suddenly everything that they depend on, which is basically their car, um, no longer works. And everybody's stranded and very angry. And uh, there would be a lot of mayhem. Uh, we've already seen that, for instance, during Hurricane Katrina and afterwards. Because of all the refinery problems, the um, gasoline pipeline that, that goes uh, up from, from the Gulf uh, I think it ends up in New Jersey somewhere. It couldn't be filled. So gas stations in places like uh, North Carolina ran dry. And I've heard from people in that area that basically civilization ceased to exist. And then when gasoline supplies were restored, civilization sort of came back. But that, that should be the pattern in a lot of places in this country. There's been some limited coverage of peak oil in the press recently. Do you think it's enough to raise the level of awareness for people in this country about the things that you predict are going to happen? Unfortunately, a lot of people sim simply cannot be reached because they, they refuse to hear what we have to say. It's not that they can't understand it. It's that they refuse to listen. And the media in general in the United States makes it very easy because there's this fictional reality that they perpetuate and foist on people that contradicts what we're saying. We're saying that this will not continue for very much longer, people. And then the media says that everything is fine, everything is normal. And uh, even the president is now in the game where he says completely nonsensical things, like, you know, drilling in, in, the, in Alaska for oil will actually make a difference. But he re recently said that. It contradicts what his own government says about the amount of oil left there. So there are all these just fictional, feel-good messages 
saturating the media. And so the, the reality-based people really don't stand a chance.